Hi, I'm Samantha Velvert, and today I'm excited to speak with director Drew Xanthopoulos about his new documentary, Fathom, a film about scientists studying humpback whale songs and communication, premiering on Apple TV Plus and, and in select theaters on June 25th. Drew Xanthopoulos is also the director and cinematographer of the, um, of the amazing award-winning documentary, The Sensitives, about people suffering from an environmental illness. Now, let's get started on some of the questions. How did you end up choosing Dr. Michelle Fournette and Dr. El um, Ellen Garland for Fathom? It's a great question. Um, I, it was really important for me to have scientists in the film who spend a lot of time at sea, who leave home for months uh, to be out there in the world of the whales. And that's not a lot of scientists, as far and few in between who are able to do that. Um, and I also wanted scientists who are asking really interesting questions, really big questions that make us really think about the world we live in very differently and about whales. Um, and Michelle and Ellen were uh, just absolutely perfect when I met them. And when I finally like, wrapped my head around what they're studying, which is so amazing and complicated and, and interesting, um, it was just obvious that they were the two uh, leads of the film. They're amazing women. Um, now, what was it like shooting the film on a boat? Oh boy. Uh, it was, when I first got on a boat, it was a really scary few hours where I was really seasick and I thought, oh my God, I don't think I'm going to be able to make this film. My body won't let me. Uh, but then I recovered from it kind of miraculously and, um, I never got seasick again. So, uh, that was a really important hurdle to get over. Outside of that, it was, um, it had its own set of challenges. I mean, the boats are really tiny. They're the size of large couches, basically. And I don't want to get in a scientist's way, um, but I also really need to like capture, you know, all the nuances, all the small details of what they're doing and the whales on top of that. So um, it was just a lot of making sure I was pointing the camera in the right direction at the right time and making sure it was all in focus and somehow pulled it off. It seems so cool just being on a boat all that time in the ocean and also capturing stuff. It was um, really cool. It was super cool. Yeah. What role does cinematography play in Fathom? How does it help tell the story? Well, that's a really good question. Um, the cinematography was, all the choices I made with the cinematography were to make it feel like a big movie, like a science fiction movie actually is what I was going for. And the reason is because the ideas that these that these two researchers are trying to wrap their heads around, they're so big, the scope of it is so huge that I needed, I wanted the film to feel like a huge film, to feel like a, a big movie with beautiful landscapes and, um, and color and sounds and all that. So I wanted it to have visually as big of a scope as the ideas in, that the scientists are chasing. Yeah, I think that the whole cinematography aspect of this film was really cool and how it made it felt sort of like a different type of documentary. And oh, thanks, Sammy. Facts. Thank you. Um, watching this movie, I felt like there was a message of feminism in the scientist stories. Was this intentional? Um, you know, when we were first picking choosing who would be in the movie, um, the first and foremost, most important thing was we just wanted great scientists. We wanted great scientists who were doing good work. And, um, and then also, secondly, people who I really liked hanging out with, like you spend so much time together. Um, and they're, I'm asking a lot of them. So you just want to make sure that, I mean, honestly, you're making friends. Um, but then when Ellen and Michelle both signed on to be part of the film, it was clear that we were also telling um, the story of what it is to be a female researcher. And it gave the movie so much more importance and gravitas and relevance um, to, to viewers. So um, it, it made us work that much harder to make sure we get it right. Yeah, one of my favorite scenes is when um, Dr. Um, Dr. Ellen Garland was talking about how it's difficult to show weakness in being in a female field. And I thought yeah. that was really powerful. I mean, in a male dominated field, I thought that was like really powerful of her to actually use and say that type of stuff. Yeah, it's like, yes. And it, it's a, it is a really powerful sentiment. And, you know, as the filmmaker who's editing what she's doing and alongside a fabulous editor named Robin Schwartz, who is my sidekick in this whole thing. Um, 
and producers Megan and Andrea. But the, the important thing is you want to main, you have to maintain their dignity. They're scientists, you know, um, and they're, and they're doing this work and, and they're doing it as good, if not better than all of their other colleagues, you know? Um, and, but at the same time, their personal experiences are real and their disadvantages are real. So it's like a really fine line between balancing, acknowledging, you know, how they're making the work in the world they're making it in and what they can and can't do because they're women, but also um, really showing that it's, it's not keeping them from doing this incredible work. They're, they're able, they're, they're pushing through it and they're able to do it. And they're pretty exceptional in that way. Yeah. I really like that. Um, how did making this film change your life and your views of science? Oh, that's another, these are the best questions I've gotten all day. This is amazing. Uh, I, uh, it's a profound experience to be out there in Alaska and to be able to hear whales breathing in every direction for, for miles and miles. And that's all you hear. It sounds like the world is breathing. It, I can't even, it's hard to explain what the effect that has on you. Um, and what it does is these things that we tell each other over and over again, that like, you know, it's not just us and we have relationships, everything else and our connections to, you know, nature and other animals are real. And the, it makes it, 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 keep, it makes it real. It makes it emotional rather than just like an intellectual thing that we can sort of tell ourselves and be like, of course, that's the right thing. You feel it in your bones when you're there. And for me, that was the most profound experience. Yeah, how Dr. Michelle Fournette was talking about how just being out there can turn you into a different person. It's just so cool. Like, she, yeah. just a really life-changing experience being out there in nature with the whales. Absolutely. Hopefully the film gets people, you know, as close to that without being there themselves. Yeah. Um, what, did it, what did you learn about whale communication that surprised you the most? I think one of the, the, during the research period, the thing that was surprising was the idea that what they do is, it's not language. It's not what we do. We have a word, we make a sound, uh, and I'll make a sound for you. The sound is the sound fish, right? But that's a word and it means, we know what that means. And they don't think that whales, the sounds that they're making for communication, they don't think that they have a sound that just means fish. As far as I've heard, they think that their sounds are, are very different. They don't represent one thing that they might represent a lot of different things. They might represent a sort of ecosystem of, of different objects and things happening at the same time. So that was kind of the most surprising thing, which was just opening up the idea of what communication can be as something so much more than what just we do, what we do. Yeah, I, I really agree with that. Um, well, uh, what was the most challenging part of making this film? Um, you know, in some ways, the most challenging part of making this film are the same things that were the most challenging aspects for the scientists, which is, it's just, it, after a long time, it's hard to be away from home. It's hard to be away from your friends. It's hard to be away from, uh, you know, your family. It's, it's, it, it's incredible to be out there and it's such a magical experience. But as you heard, you know, Michelle and Ellen describe, it's hard to be away from people you love also for long periods of time. So in that way, we were sharing the experience together. And I very much relate to, you know, this, some of the sacrifices that field researchers have to make in order to do their work. Yeah, so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, Drew Anthopoulos, for, take, for talking with me today. You can find Fathom in select theaters and on Apple TV Plus starting on June 25th. I'm Samantha Belf reporting for Kids First. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss another one of our amazing reviews or interviews. Bye. Thanks, Samantha.